Okay, and welcome back, everybody. You're watching the Premier League Season 3. My name is Triumph Man, and I will be casting Game 2 between Mouse Sports on the Dire and Dangerous Dames on the Radiant. Now, this is Game Number 2. Mouse Sports holding the 1 0 lead at the moment. It's going to be down to DD to win this one and force a tiebreaker in the third Mouse match. Sports. But again, Bounty Hunter banned out first by the Radiant team. Just trying DD banning him out first. Last time it was Mouse Sports getting rid of the Bounty Hunter first. And we'll see if Dirge gets picked off. Kind of expecting Magnetor to disappear as well. Batrider, though, the first banned by Mouse Sports. Radiant team and Mouse are definitely a team who will put that Magnus to use. They love him. Really completely. In fact, Kuriki really causing some serious damage. With However, DD decide to ban Mouse out Sports. the Darks here. It looks like they're hoping to get their hands on this Magnus here. If it's slip through. We'll see what they've got in mind. Now the final ban here from Mouse Sports before we get the first speaking phase. Now they do have, let's see, what have we got? They've got Templar Assassin, we've got Magnus still up there, we do have, oh, okay, it could be Sven, they decide to pick up that Sven. I mean, against certain teams, Wisp is pretty much insta-ban material. But as it is, neither of these teams really going to put that wisp to use, it looks like. But also, Dirge is in the pool. Dirge is another hero that gets banned very frequently. We'll see if DD decide to go after it right now. And no, they will go for that Magnus. Dirge, though, the instant counter pick there from Mouse Sports. Templar Assassin also snapped up fairly shortly as well. But it looks like DD, they picked up that Magnus, of course. he can. Magnus is fairly flexible. We've seen him mid, seen him suicide lane. Can even... Duck in the jungles, you know, handle the pool, stuff like that, do that, stack up and just use the shockwaves every now and then. I've seen that when he's under a lot of pressure on the suicide lane, just go, screw it. And disappear in the jungle and just start shockwaving his way to victory. Queen of Pain. Ten seconds. But Queen remaining. of Pain, the next pick here from DD. It looks like they're going to go for the mass AoE if they can possibly afford Five it. seconds remaining. Which, I mean, makes perfect sense. So the question is, well, man, we've seen Magnus used before. Sometimes, especially, I think it was with Mouse Spores, back when they were fire, we're using this every now and then. They pick up the Magnus, but they weren't picking up so much for the vacuum effect. They were picking up his stun for the superior. Like, it was more that they were using it in this particular fight, because a lot of early BKBs were popped out against them. And they just used Magnus instead for the superior magic stun. It was just basically they wanted to shut people down while they were BKB'd up. People like Batrider, Templar Assassin, who were BKBing in the face, it's screw it. Or, I think it was Slaughter as well. They were just BKBing in the face, it's, it's screw it. Magnus just started throwing his ult on single target here. It's just to knock them, get them out of position. They thought, you know what, we'll be safe here. I've got my BKB up. And Magnus go, you know what, I'm going to blow my stun on you. And it's exactly what he did. Just catching them out of position. Of course, positioning, very, very important in the game of Dota. But pick number three, and it will be more and more AoE. And there we go. Rubik throwing the next pick. From Mouse Sports, we'll see if they can snag some good spells. They should also mention, of course, Magnus with massive damage amplification can also be a very, very potent buff and uh, can pretty much send a lot of carries over the edge as well. Because in fact, I've seen Magnus with a gyrocopter cause complete and utter devastation just thanks to throwing down his empower. Looks like Naga's time on the next ban here by Didi. It's, I mean, it's a fair cop. It's kind of thing, I mean, Naga Siren is the other thing, like, you do against her. If anybody has a huge ass, you know, wombo combo, the best way to shut it down, of course, is just counter stuns. We might even see Titan a band out as well, they might be worried about that Ravage. But, you know, the counter the counter setup there, of course, some Siren, very, very annoying for them. But that said, Mouse Sports, it looks like they're going for a fairly early mid-game lineup here. Of course, Undying, very powerful, around about the 25-30 minute mark. Up till about then, his Tombstone is incredibly frustrated to deal with, but... As the game wears on, he tends to sort of scale down in usefulness. Once a hard carry starts to start, just one or two shotting his tombstone, it becomes very difficult to stay relevant in those fights. Ten seconds remaining. And now Void will be the next pick, and yeah, there we go, DD getting rid of those big AoE stuns. Mouse Force also getting rid of the Enchantress along with the Chain. Looks like they're really worried about that jungler doing those early tower pushes. But I'm just wondering if DD if they'll ban out the Tide Hunter as well. Though they get rid of Luna instead. And Jakira will be the final ban from Mouse Sports, and DD probably looking for another support there. Now the question is whether or not Mouse Sports are going to play Rubik as some kind of support. I think they will because if he's not support, generally he takes a solo mid. Sometimes he takes. I've seen him on the odd occasion take a suicide lane. It's a little odd. But Mouse Sports also grabbing up the Lone Druid. Now Venomance has been picked up by DD. Now this doesn't surprise you. A, it's some nice AoE. Of course, you get the Magnus ult, and then you throw out the Venomous Gal there. It's a crippling slow to follow up with, but at the same time. It's also a really, really frustrating hero for Templar Assassin to deal with. And also has a great counter push potential with the Mass Ward spam. And it helps shut down that TA as well. 
But that said, haven't seen a lot of Venomancers re uh, as of late. When Templar Assassin first burst into the scene, it became immensely popular. Pretty much Venomancer was insta-pick material just to counter the Templar Assassin. But a lot of teams have gone, you know, okay, there are a lot of other options here. They've been doing stuff just like dominating Wildkin and stuff like that. In fact, that's maybe why they were picking up the Chan and the Enchantress. Just because that's something you can do to mess with Templar Assassin in the mid lane. It's just send a Wildkin Tornado after it. It knocks off those refraction charges incredibly quickly, and it's just all round, just plain out annoying to deal with in the mid lane. Especially when you don't have a stun to go and hunt down the Wildkin. With. But now the final pick here for DD. I think they've got the support sorted out here. They're probably... Now the question is, I mean, they could go for an offensive front if they want to. I mean, they really wanted to. They could say, you know what, Magnus, Venomancer, and Shrek are going to run together, but I don't know about that. We'll see. We'll see. On the other hand, they could be going for dual lanes, or it could be a defense trial. Queen of Pain mid, Lashrak, Venomancer, babysitting somebody else, and then Magnus in the suicide lane. So DD have a few options open to them here. But we'll see what they decide to go with. Mouse Sports, on the other hand, are most likely looking for another support. And looks like we might possibly Mouse even see dual lanes. This could actually be, this could actually be a Magnus suicide lane. Queen of Pain taking this um, bottom lane. Lashrak mostly jungling, and the Venomancer and Slada taking a dual mid. And that would be very dangerous for Templar Assassin to go up against Venomancer. Of course, level two poison. Poison Steve, of course, knocks off refraction charges, and the Venomous Gale as well throwing a good slow. And you follow up with a slow stun there from Slada. And that gets very, very rough indeed. Ten seconds remaining. TA could have a rough gig Five in the mid lane. They might even try and rotate her away. They could even throw something like Undying in mid. We'll see what they've got in mind. Or even the Lone Druid. The Lone Druid is a hero that can mid fairly efficiently. But we'll see what Mouse Sports have in mind. I think another support is coming. Okay, Rubik is going to be the solo support here. And it will be Enigma taking those jungling duties here. Most likely. I mean, he could be suicide landing. That's also a possibility. But Black will be farming with that Lone Druid. And the question is, can they put the pressure on Black? Because, of course, he does farm at a crazy good rate. But let's call out the players here. Now, I have to turn off the overlay. Fantastic. All right, so for the Radiant side, we do have playing on DD's side. We have Mad playing the Shrek, Link playing Slider, Soksha playing the Magnus, Rise on Venomance, and Calculus playing Queen of Pain. For the Dire side... The mouse sports. We have Kuriki on the Enigma, Fata playing Templar Assassin Pass, playing the Undying and Alex on the Rubik, of course, ever the support player Alex and Black playing the Lone Druid, of course. Black, a pretty much dedicated hard carry player. Does last hit like a boss now. We see the eco build there on Templar Assassin opening up with just three branches and some tangos. Now Slider though, okay, no, he will be farming this bottom lane by the looks of things. Has picked up a hatchet there. Which means Calculus, where are you going? Okay, Calculus most likely to take mid then. And it will be a defensive trial in there with Rise and Mad babysitting the slaughter there. And I mean, this is fairly dangerous. Although, are they sending an offense? They are sending an offensive trial against it? No, I don't think so. I think these supports just will be scouting it. Will be. And I think Enigma is probably going to abandon this lane because this is too dangerous. This is way too hot. Two stuns, two slows. As well, it's two stuns, two slows. That's just ridiculously hard. In fact, no, three slows. You throw on the poison sting as well. Because, of course, the slow they slide up does actually have a two second slow after he's stunned on the Slithering Crush. The Definitely going to be rough. But, of course, it will be Soksha playing the suicide lane up in the top lane. We'll be up against Black playing the Lone Druid. Now, Black will be able to farm fairly efficiently here against Magnus himself. So it looks like we might be having a bit of a. Clash here, it looks like now we've got passes trouble. Body blocking for Slider. Double damage over Rune doing a lot of damage. It might be close here. Finishes it up with a decay. A terrible result there. For Slider, did not want that to happen. Of course, he doesn't lose much gold, in fact, because he spent it all up. But at the same time, he wanted just to say, have fun, good luck. Oh, no. But pass, baiting them, baiting them, baiting them. Gets off a decay at the last moment and cleans up Slider. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, indeed. Now Rise is in some trouble here. Do we have a slow? We do have the Venomous Gale though. It's about to wear off and Rise now could be in some trouble. As you can see, Undying is considerably faster there than poor old Smenomance. It's a very slow hero. And Lashrak though does have the Split Earth. Needs to... Oh wow, okay. Apparently has... Okay, so they're blaming blaming possibly that uh, kill there on him. Spike into 800 milliseconds. We're on the same server as last time, so who knows. But if Lashrak can land a stun here, they might be able to bring down Undyne. But that said, Rise definitely needs to back the hell up. Because if he hangs around, if he gets off another decay, it's pretty much going to be lights out. Or even another attack. As you can see, he's hitting for a considerable amount of damage. Now, 
All right, Didi of Reading. We'll see if Rise can get... If the pass can run down Rise. If we go for two, pass. Can he make two happen? Double it up here. Double the fun. Stun going to come down. We'll catch him. And they will turn this around and get the kill there. It was a little bit too greedy. Looks like he should have backed up. But you know what? He got the first blood. And it's not a big deal for him. Because he bought up as well. And he got a straight 400 gold there. Oh, so Queen of Pain, though, against Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin should be able to handle this. See, Shadow Strike harassment is fairly annoying, but at the same time, she can harass straight back there with the side blades. But a bit of a gank on the top lane here, possibly Magnus now. Maybe, no, he's got Skewer up. He'll be just fine. I'm actually surprised he didn't come out here early and knock down these trees with the Skewer, just to give him a bit better vision. Now, Enigma has decided to go straight to the jungle. Paz will be suicide laning here. I don't know if he can handle this. I mean, initially he got that kill, but at the same time it was mostly down to the fact that he got the double damage from Without that, he would never have picked up that kill. Meanwhile, Soksha just trying to stand in range just to leech experience. Getting harassed a little bit here. See the Orb of Venom going to slow him down as well. Just going to buy time for Alex to get stuck in there, get a few hits in. And this is definitely getting fairly difficult for the Undying. You see there, after that initial kill, he's really struggling to get close. So a good start, but nonetheless... He's going to struggle to control the plane, especially once the pools start coming out in force. As you can see, he doesn't have a blocking ward down. The Shrek even has counter wards ready just in case. Now, Fanta in the mid lane, though. 8 and 2. If you know, I'm incorrect. I'm looking at the wrong Akira. Fanta, though, currently sitting on 7 and 2. I was looking at Black 9 and 2 at the moment. He's farming quite well. Though, that said, he is against a fairly easy lane here. 2v1, and of course, it is only a Magnus up against him. There you go. Pass, I think he's maybe saying, screw this, might just be going to the jungle just to go and pull. Well, that will impede Kuroki a little bit. And he goes down the bottom lane, finds a two-minute rune there, is going to snag that up, not leave it for Templar Assassin. She's got a bottle, but she's probably going to focus on crawling it back and forth in a moment there. See Salada finding it fairly easy last hit. Of course, that hatchet makes life a breeze when it comes to last hitting. Sokshu, they're under the tower now. Should be able to start using this skewer fairly efficiently. Last hit with... Not the skewer, rather. His shockwave to last hit with fairly soon. There we go. He's going to use that to harass and last hit with the same time. Gets a little bit aggressive. They didn't really need to take those hits. See, Cactus has also picked up his own bottle there. And the harassment now coming up from Fata. Those side blades ever annoying. Just spilling uphill. Causing trouble. Meanwhile, though, what's that coming to mid? I think it's no, it's just the bottle getting ready to shuttle it back. Well, he's be careful though. Comes a little bit too close. Queen of Pain gunning for it. Oh, it looks like it might have been a bit of a bait. And Fatter getting a kill there. Was that a very well timed career upgrade, or was that a mistake there? That a lucky result there for that. I do not know. In the end, working up for the best there. Queen of Pain sensing the ability to gun. I mean, yeah, Queen of Pain pulled that off. That would have been a pretty big blow to Fatter. Not having the ability to shuttle the career back and forth, plus potentially losing an item. Well, there wasn't one on there. But in the end, a timely career upgrade. Keeping that career alive. And Queen of Pain probably fairly frustrated by that fatter. They're going to disjoint that Shadow Strike. And meanwhile, on the top lane, Lone Druid. It's going to take a bit of harassment there on the band. Now, it looks like Magnus has also got his own bottle now. Meanwhile, possible... No, they just, just pulled it. And this is what's going to suck for Undying. See, he's still stuck at level 2. Because he can't really get close to his lane. Can't really disrupt the pulls. And they're just doing triple pulls at the moment. Straight across like that. Completely denying these waves. And that would... That's got to suck to play against. Just getting absolutely nothing. He may need to duck... I think he's going to need to go to his own jungle. Just focus on pulling there in a moment. He's not getting much at all. Calculus now taking a lot of energy. There's a Mel hit. Has to blink away. He's going to bottle up. Four minute rune pops top. And he will manage to give himself a haster, unfortunately. Let's see, Queen of Pain actually going to take it top. Going to look in the jungle here. Kuroki. Okay, his lucky stars didn't see it. They mass pings out on Queen of Pain. They know trouble's coming. Skewer there. He's ready. Queen of Pain jumping. And there's with the scream as well. Telekinesis to stun the Queen of Pain. But I don't think he's going to get away here. A handy deny there from Mouse Sports. Black turning around and denying. The Rubik in the end, the Shadow Strike working against him. I mean, this is why some people say you don't get level 1 Shadow Strike. It's because it's slow as negligible. It's only 20%. And at the same time, it just opens you right up to these denies. That's it, though. Nice little play there from Black. But Calculus now hasting away, or not hasting away, actually being slowed down significantly. Can we get another Mel hit in here? Here it comes, another Sun Trap Mel hit coming in. Not even melting. Decides just to auto attack him to death. Secretly. And Fatter will pick up that kill there. So Queen of Pain, this is just not going her way. Gets picked off twice. Misses a kill because it gets denied. First Blood in the River. It just seems it's all about mouse sports at the moment, though. Of course, they. that said, though, when I say it's all about mouse sports, we've got to keep in mind Undying is having a hell of a time in this bottom lane. Really not being a whole lot of fun. 
Meanwhile, though, in the jungle, now Sokshi in some trouble, gets dragged there back by the telekinesis. Now Kuriki trying to back up, he needs to be careful, doesn't want to take another hit there. We'll actually pick him off, though, in the end. Sokshi gets cleaned up. And Mouse Wars pick up another kill. Calculus, though, definitely struggling in this mid lane. We see the double Sonic Trap being tossed down there, and Cactus needs to be quite careful. Level 1 Blink has a very long cooldown, so he has to be very careful about playing aggressively. Because even if he blinks, like if he's here, he gets hit by the slow, and he blinks back into this one, he gets hit by the slow again. There's not a lot he can do to escape, because that level 1 slow, or rather, that level 1 Blink has such a long cooldown. It's very easy, as we saw, for Templar Assassin to run down his target. See the slow there on pass, pass down struggle, they miss the splitter though, Decay being tossed down again, pass though getting hit by 80, here comes the stun, Slada sprinting in a position, and there we go, an easy kill though, Venomance is going to take the last hit, not leaving it there for the Slider, Slider though possibly going for an early armlet here. I think probably the big issue though of course in everybody's mind is Black is free farming, and of course this is about the last thing you want to have happen, it's a free farming Black, and there we go, it's gone for the early Midas there, we'll be getting that Radiance in a moment as well. Well, not in a moment, but rather he's probably going to get it on time, right about the 15 to 18 minute mark. And Slider though, I mean, let's check the gold minute. Slider's doing okay, not as well as Black certainly, but see, 36 and 19 there against Black's 44 and 13. That said though, we've got to remember the suicide lane for the Dire is doing much, much worse there. And, I mean, coming down to this mid-team, you've got to keep in mind, even though Mouse Bots are doing really good now, you've got to keep in mind, there is a big, and I mean a big, big Wombo combo on DD's, up DD's sleep. They can force these big team fights and make them happen, and land the Magnetor ulties. This could definitely be problematic, because he's fatted out into trouble there. He's got the Edict ready to knock it off, as well as the Slow and the Sting as well. It looks like Fatter is going to back up in time before he has all of his refraction charges knocked off. Magnus now still sitting in this top lane. Probably going to shockwave his crit down in a second. Or not, he's still last hit him down. There's no competition here at the moment. Lone Druid is coming in. I think he's pulling the bear right now. Or possibly healing it up. It appears not to be present. And we see that... Oh, Amplified Damage tossed up. Undying still level 2 at 7.5. And, and this is the issue. It's about Mouse Sports are going to be playing 4v5 essentially. Because when you're level 2... At 8 minutes in, you know something's gone horribly, horribly wrong. I think they might even want to stack up some creep camps for him and just help him, help him clear them because they really need to get this Undying back in the game. Like I said, Undying, he definitely falls off in the late game. He really becomes far less useful. So it looks like Lone Druid going to be picking up Tranquil Boots in a moment. Has picked up a Ring of Regen. Let's see, Templar Assassin. Just chilling in mid, just going to continue farm. 38 and 11. He's doing fairly well. So 53 and 13 for Black there. 51 and 24 there for Link. Although Link, I just don't think has the same staying power there as the Lone Druid. Looks like they are going to pick off the main cell on the top lane. Kuruki now coming up there to help as well. And they should have the push power to take down this tower if they wanted. They've got the bear here as well as the islands. Looks like they're going to change their mind on that though. Or will they actually? No, they've got a fresh wave of creep here. They're actually, they are going to gun for it there. And now we've got the Eidolons going to split there. Going to get a whole six. Some fairly easy tower kill for them if they want it. Meanwhile, Paz is looking vulnerable once again. He's going to finally hit level three. He gets amplified. And is the amp damage that has to back up immediately. Not even going to get his level three out just yet. See the stuns get tossed down there. And then we go sprint in. And now Paz is... Oh, no. He backs up again. Link just threatening him. Says, back the hell up. Don't you dare come near this creep. He does just manage to sneak into level three, though. See, it doing some serious damage. Another amp damage. Decay is being tossed out. But the glyph gets popped by the dice. So a fresh wave of creep. He's going to take the aggro and keep beating down on this tower. As the link going to keep him off the tower. Here we go. Another crush going to come in. Throws down the crush. Doesn't hit the undying though. Split earth as well. He's trying to take out this creep wave. And allow the creep to finish off the tower. Another edict. There we go. Easy kill there. It's not a whole lot undying can do. Looks like Fat and Alan's in trouble. They've been slow. There's a Sonic Trap there. Kuriki now moving. Doesn't have his ult up though. There's a Malphus there. Calculus backing up. Another slow getting tossed in. Rice getting hit by the Sonic Trap, but doesn't actually get chased there. Fatter decided not to die. Does have a regeneration rune up his sleeve. We'll go and probably back up and pop that in a second. There we go. Now his DOTs are off him. Pass again. That amp damage making him so squishy. See, negative five armor at the moment. Makes Link rip through him. Decay or no decay? See a skewer out there from the Magnus. 
Meanwhile, though, Lashrak just focusing on his pulls right now. It looks like they're going for an early Roshan run, though. Just using the Eidolons to help just beat down on him, as it looks like as well as to help tank at the moment. Fado now just going to stack that negative armor. Easy Roshan run there, indeed. They'll pick up that early Aegis there. I mean, all in all honesty, DD probably were not ready to go and try and stop that anyway. Probably didn't even, yeah, no knowledge of it at all. No wards up at all. Down in that Roshan pit there. Now, Calculus. It's slowed there. Has got a level 2 blink this time. We'll manage to get a oh, walk over another sun trap. Will they gun for it, though? No, it doesn't look like. They realize they can't close the gap there. And Kuriki doesn't really have any mana up either. Has already blown his soul ring as well. Uh-oh, we see the slow toss down there. Alex down a bit of trouble. There's Telekinesis, so I'm going to drag him out of position. Although Calculus is here from what level that can Kuriki is back as well. Throws in the mouth. There's a Meld hit there to finish off the Venomance. But here comes Slider. Slider charging in. Going to try and go after Fatter at the moment. Fatter, though, going to be fairly immune to the damage. We see Telekinesis, or rather a stun being used there on Alex. Alex has a couple of turns, so he gets tossed down there to try and help out. And it's not a particularly high level, though, but it will chase off. It will chase him off, though. Malifus, though, will finish off the Slider as well. It looks like they've figured out there is a high ground war there. They will pick that off indeed. But trading a Rubik there for the slider, definitely a decent trade for them. Of course, picking up that slider more important. Now, I'm just going to check the gold minute here. As we can see, Black, of course, free farming to his heart skin. I mean, this is pretty much it. It's picked, whoa, wait a minute. He picked up a cloak as well. All right, well, we'll see where he goes with that in a moment. Meanwhile, another pick off there. Queen of Pain getting jumped. The blink dagger on Templar Assassin is done. Just using him ability to get stuck in. Bring up the net worth as well. Just looking at Enigma. Enigma 2.2k in the bank here. It looks like he might be going for an early blink as well. If he was going for the BKB, I figured he would have picked some parts up now. Same for the early mech. And now Mad now trying to get free. The slow gets tossed down there. As you see the ult up there from Pass. Pass now going to go after him. They will get a kill there. They pick up the Lashrak. A signing trap. Their Skewer is up and they want to go for it. The ult is down though. Kuriki now backing up. It has Black Hole ready, but no mana to use it. And there we go. Tower gets picked up there by Enigma in the end. Skewer, oh no, Shockwave being used to harass. Not doing enough. Another port in. Orange is back. Queen of Pain has arrived. I think they may just decide to back up here. And there we go. Shockwave after Shockwave. Or maybe not, actually. Looks like they're going to gun for another kill here. Fatter looking for Rise. Rise are on the run. Queen of Pain, they're going to get taken. Oh no, they're going to pick off the Rubik. Tombstone gets tossed down in the same position once again. Calculus out some trouble. Gets stunned repeatedly by the Malthus. Has a blink up. Can escape. They pick up the Enigma. Here comes Slider. They're going to go after the Undying. Undying, though. Throwing in a decay. Can he get the other one off? No, he will not. He will get picked off. And now the Tombstone also going to get drilled down as well. But here comes a Lone Druid. Lone Druid, though, changes mind decides not to go after Link. Link full health along with Calculus looking quite tough and finally Dangerous Danes land a good hit as it looks like Fat announced a trouble as well. Can he land a split earth? It's coming up in one second. A poor came in. Mel hit though. Forced it to back up. Tower to finish. Rubik's back. Slide over into trouble now. There's a stun there for Telekinesis. Now Alex are getting a boxed in. Slithering crush. He's vision. Oh there we go. They got vision. They spot him up there with amp damage. The bear procs root. Skewer though over the cliff. Dragging the bear away and it will allow Sokshi to get it back to safety. It's a also, the rating curry comes into danger. Now, Fado playing dangerously. There we go. Solar blinks in. Gonna go after this Magus here. Pops his ult up there. It's a superior magic stun. Decay the slow again. They're gonna pick off Soksha. Soksha gets drilled down. Just barely catching up. Catching up to him. He probably thought he was safe. He was not. Templar Assassin still had the Aegis on her as well. And it looked like DD had some traction finally, but immediately slipping up there. And now it looks like they're gonna go after Rise once again. Fado gives no. Does <laughs> not give a damn. Chasing after his opponent still has that Aegis. Another Sonic Trap being thrown down. Now it's Shrek being slowed. Will they chase after him again? Can't blink at the moment. Being put on cooldown by that Sun or by that Shadow Strike there. And Fatter might finally decide to calm down and go back and get some health. No, he's just going to get a rune. He'll probably go and chase after someone again. Meanwhile, though, bottom lane, Kuriki now in some trouble. Kuriki trying to back up, but here comes the haste there. It's a black hole trying to set things up. Armlet is up there on Link. Link, though, in some terrible trouble. Here he comes. He gets picked off by Fata. Fata's still charging after him. A blink away there from Queen of Pain. She's going to try and teleport out. Vision being given. Maybe? No, not quite. They're just trying to find him over the trees here. Decay being tossed in. They want a Midnight Pulse here to knock down the trees in a second. I think they know he's still there. Queen of Pain blinky again. Did they catch that? Kuroki though, no they did not, it looks like he will, Calculus getting cut a break there, no they pinged him, they think they know he's there, a blink out again, they cut down the trees once again, but Calculus blinking further and further away, Pass still looking for, oh he hit him with a decay, not quite enough, Pass 24 health, I think they finally decided he must have teleported out, he's got the scroll, just doesn't have the mana for it, now they're getting ready to push the tower, I think they've given up chasing Queen of Pain around in circles here, there we go, Shockwave once again, Sokcha trying to hold this off, this could be a quick game in a moment. 
calculus. Nothing can do for the next 20 seconds or so. Has to teleport home and then come back. <coughs> Crush going to clean up those Eidolons. So at the same time, Tower taking some fairly serious damage. And there we go. Mouse Sports backing up. Amplify damage there. Spotting up Templar Assassin. A 4k there in the bank there for Blackard. Also, Templar Assassin should have a new item on the way fairly soon. 3k in the bank for him. Now, will we see a glass cannon build again, or will we see a safer BKB route? Which I mean, against that lineup, of course, they do have one superior magic stun, but there's still a lot of magical damage there. I think you could definitely justify BKB next for sure, but we'll see what Templar Assassin has in mind. The Venom Answer, though, has picked the dust just to try and help prevent those meld hides. Found it though, still carrying that Aegis there at the moment. Hasn't even been forced to use it. How long's left on it? It's going to disappear fairly shortly, in fact. Meanwhile, though, bottom tower about to get pushed here by uh, by Mouse Sports. They've got the. It was actually okay. It was actually a mech. Decided not to save up there for the blink dagger. Blink away though. Fatic anyway. Just time was a bit of a bait. Now Sokcha out of position. Down goes the tombstone. And look at uh, look at this zombies everywhere. This is the apocalypse. As it looks like they might be able to pick up this tower though. It looks like they're after Rubik. Rubik though getting the stun down. He's stolen the crush there. Calculus getting hit by poison over being popped by Rise. Rise to Adam Mana. Calculus though trying to jump away here. He's being chased. Another slow there. No, doesn't get picked up in time. A stun there on Fatter. Fatter getting picked up. And his Aegis has run out. And he will actually go down for good. Now we've got... Uh, he's going to back up here. No buyback there from Templar of Sass. They're starting to go for it now. The Phalanx, though, gets his stun off, though. Gets hit by the Skirt. It's slow. There's the buyback from Templar of Sass. The bait is coming. Malefus there on Slatter. And will we have the port to bottom there from Templar Assassin? Actually, no. Wait a minute. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Looks like she has ported back to bottom there. Although it looks like at the same time, Calculus now is in trouble. We've got Undying on his way back there as well. A slow down. Kirk Kirk does trouble. Gets amped up. Malefus there trying to hold Link off. He's going to keep giving chase. Decides not to gun the whole way. In fact, changed his mind as he sees Templar Assassin skulking about there. And there we go, Templar Assassin blinks in, hit, meld hits there on Soxia. Soxia though, trying to teleport out there. Do we have a Malefus up? One second, he will. No, he'll get cleaned up by auto attacks, in fact. <laughs> and a slow down rise. And now Fatter with his blink again. There we go. Oh, nice attempt at a block, but Phase walking through there with the uh, Brood Sense. Looks like now Rise in some serious trouble. Will get picked off. Undying, in fact, going to snag that with a decay. Somewhat unnecessary, but you know what? He needs the help he can get at the moment. He's a little bit too squishy. All he's got to his name is some arcane boots. It's a very, very basic item. Now the tower is down and the push is on. Kirk is still forcing this lane forwards. Meanwhile, we do have... There we go. The ratings is done and finished there on the Lone Druid. Meanwhile, the push is continuing. And again, the whole time... I mean, all, all, it's almost as if Mouse Sports have been kind of 3 d buying this because Undying hasn't had the hugest impact this game at the same time. Black has been busy free farming his own lane. Because Mouse Sports has been running these fights with pretty much only three and a half heroes, I'd say. Effectively, because of course Undying so damn squishy at the moment, can't get nearly as aggressive as he wants to. See the ward's being tossed down there, they've got some vision now, they could gun things they want to now. Black Hole is up as well. Dangerous Danes to be very careful indeed. We go, there he comes to Lone Druid now. He's got that bear with the radius. He's definitely scary stuff. There we go. Sun Trap's being tossed down. Not popping though. There we go. Pops him. And now Mad is in some trouble. The bear is giving chase to him. There we go. Venomous Scarf being popped down. But Mad is going to get picked up. Misses with a split. Queen of Pain pops her ultimate. The Sonic Wave. Although she's not able to really do enough damage. And the zombies are everywhere. They're giving chase. Link trying to give chase there to Fatter. Another Sun Trap tossed down. Fatter though going to get picked up there. Scream going to finish him. And Nigma buys back in the end. Used the black hole but got cut short. As it looks like now. Soxia trying to get away. He's got Skewer up in three seconds. Will get finished off. as a steal there from Alex. Will finish him up. And pass. Managing to survive a fight for a bit of a change here. Now we've got Enigma pushing mid. There we go. Tier 2 is being threatened. He's got some Eidolons left as well. Slada coming in from behind. Queen of Pain here is here as well. There's the Malefus. Not going to be able to do a whole lot. Amplify damage as well. Calculus with the auto attack. Yeah, there's another crush. You can toggle that armlet on and off if he wants to. There we go. Mech King pop there. Armlet off. He doesn't toggle it back on. It will get picked off there by the Eidolons. They get a revenge kill there, although they will get taken out themselves. Meanwhile, though, it looks like Black has decided to go straight back to his own lane and continue farming. And 
there we go. I think the Radiant side are getting a bit concerned that they've lost control of their own jungle, which is definitely a very problematic situation to be in. I see Rubik now building towards an urn. We'll give him some nice strength stats as well as just giving him the ability to heal up in the middle of a fight. He's a little squishy at the moment. In fact, did Rubik go? No, he did not go with any levels. Now, if the winner up against a magic damage oriented lineup like this, often we'll see teams go for one or two levels in telekinesis and then max out Null Field after they get the Fade Bolt. And of course, his ultimate. Let's see, Fado though, looks like he's just going to solo Roshan here at the moment. And he is going for a glass cannon build. There we go, another death slayer. It looks like Pink is on his way to help out. He just spawns Armlocks here as well, help out with that Roshan attempt. Meme Templar Assassin is <coughs> copying a fair bit of damage there. But once they can just transfer the aggro, it should be okay. In fact, Fado now is he gets he's stunned. Actually, no, there we go. He just melts to get the aggro off and bottles up there. And there we go, there's that melt hit, the negative armor, of course, tearing through Roshan quite easily. Mad though, in the jungle, trying to get his power treads at the moment. Just trying to bulk up a bit. Meanwhile, Slada, 1200 gold, probably BKB next. There we go, an Ogre Club as well, most likely a BKB next on the menu. Well, that said, see, it's a lot of physical damage on the enemy team, and in fact, the Spirit Magic stun, so maybe he might leave him bother. We'll see what he's got in mind here. And there we go, there's that Plague Ward spam, although unfortunately, not doing a whole lot here. They have enough auto attack damage to cut through these wards fairly easily. Looks like the bear has just... It looks like Black just went with the uh, cloak just to get him some... Oh, fine. It looks like the uh, crit camps are fine. But he went with the cloak just because it's very magic heavy on... Magic damage oriented lineup and stacking the cloak with Rubik's Null Field is always helpful. But there we go. Tier 2 tower in the mid lane. Gonna fall in just a second here. And really DD doing all they can at the moment which is counter push the other lanes. You say, okay, we're gonna take the mid tower. Let's just try and take some other towers here in return. But it looks like they're just gonna gun for the racks here. Now sports, they know they have an advantage and they're going to use it. There we go, Plague Wards not holding up to the bear. The bear going to tear through that. There's the demolish working his magic there on the tower. Lightning there from Lashrak, but really only level 2, not really enough to hold it off just yet. See the Decay starting to get spammed out along with the Sonic Traps there. Templar Assassin thinking about gunning for it. She could open up if she wanted to. She has been amped up though, quite visible. They can see her coming from a good distance off. But of course, she guns for it. She does have that Aegis ready to go. But it's more going to come down to whether or not they can land a good black hole here. It is available and ready to go. So you see the stun get dropped down. And the bear going to take some damage from that. I'm going to keep trying to push in here. But there is no kind of push really happening at the moment. Stun trap tossed down. Stevie and power there on Queen of Pain. Just trying to give her a bit of extra damage. And the bear gets picked off. Do they have a spare one? Yes, they do. There we go. They respawn it. Well, will they keep pushing or will they wait for a spare bear in two minutes? It looks like they're going to wait for the spare bear, I think. Possibly not, they're just maybe trying to bait this fight out. Queen of Pain now getting out of position, gets insta-gib there before the telekinesis even finishes. Oh, Calculus making a bit of an error of judgement there. It looks like now they've got the 4v5 advantage. Mousebots are going to gun for this. They've got a wide opening here, they can just go straight for it. There we go, Templar Assassin jumps in, Tombstone drops down, ult there from Paz, and now Link taking some serious damage as well. Ryze having to back up, the burn is doing its work, as it looks like they will pick up the Slaughter. Ryze next hit, one more hit, a triple kill there. A buyback there from Slaughter as well, but a triple kill going out to Lone Druid. As it's no, it was going to Fatter. Fatter getting an ultra kill. The Aegis being popped, but he doesn't really give a damn. And they'll get this Rax fairly easily. Slider buys back, goes for the stun. But it's 2v4 at the moment. A buyback there from Magnus as well. Magnus already blowing a stun as well. See the auto attacks shredding Slider at the moment. And there's not a whole lot they can do. And now the damage being stacked here on the Rax. His mid Rax is about to fall. Slider, too low health to help, really. In fact, I mean, Templar Assassin can blink forward and just end him right now. Then we got Decay doing so much damage. Another Decay to finish him just gets way too close. Decay and a Solar up there to finish him off. So it looks like there's not much you can do it now. Mag on Venom to get stuck in. He gets picked off. Queen of Pain is back as well. These Shockwaves are just not doing enough damage. The Bear will have to back off in the end. It looks like he's working towards that Assault as well. See so the Plate Mail being picked up. But an easy rag there for Mouse Sports. And this is looking a little grim here for DD. As you see there, they have fallen 15k behind in gold, as well as around 14k experience as well. But see there, the net worth really telling you how far ahead they are. Pretty much, Lone Druid has the combined value of the top two Radiant heroes. That is not a good sign at all. In fact, Pass, who is getting crushed in his lane, is even now more valuable, has a better net worth than everybody else. In fact, there we go. See, he's picked up the Hood of Defiance, working towards the pipe, making himself much, much harder to get rid of. Just 
more than mad is trying to get his hands on a Necronic, and we'll see what he buys. I think he's just trying to finish off his Pound Red Zone now. Kuroki, though, keeping the pressure on the bottom lane, going to head out here. I hear a mag... Oh, there he is. I'm wondering where he was. He's hoping someone is going to come about here, and he's going to skewer them in that direction. He's hoping, and he could be in luck. Kuroki is headed up. Oh, no, he's changed his mind. There we go. Just comes out in Shockwaves. He decides not to gun for it. Now Slider, does he even blink? No, he does not. He'll only 1,100 gold there, of course. Had to burn a buyback. There we go, Malthus, as well as a slow telekinesis on top of that. Now we've got Sokshin's in trouble. Gonna back up, though. Templar Assassin pops out of haste and backs the hell up. Worry about getting stunned out of position, but now Black is on the job here. He's gonna give chase, although it looks like he will get away here in the end. The stun out as a look at that armor, negative armor, though, ripping on the Lone Druid. Lone Druid now is in trouble. Lone Druid trying to back up there. They will pick up the Venomancer, though. A mech being popped. Soul Rip as well as it looks like he healed there. The ult is popped there by Soksha. Soksha, though, picked up. Split Earth gets tossed down, and they will get the kill there on Soksha. He gets cleaned up. Queen of Pain buys back. What is going on in this? Ah, there we go. Fatter is just doing whatever the hell he feels like in the base. Queen of Pain has to buy back. About to get taken out again. Going to try and blink back in this direction. There we go. She does indeed. Calculus dodges back. But the GG is called. And now sports an easy game for them here. And I mean, this is pretty much the way things go against Mouse Sports. Uh, against Black. When you let Black farm, he gets very, very much out of control. Anyway, guys. Uh, this has been Triper Man casting for the Premier League Season 3. This has been Mouse Sports taking out Dangerous Danes in a 2-0 sweep. Now, coming up on, I believe, the 12th and 13th, we should have some uh, we should have some tiebreakers coming up fairly soon, so stay tuned for that. Of course, we do have several teams now. Four teams, in fact, playing off for fourth spot, and only one of them go through, so stay tuned for that. We'll be announcing details on that fairly soon. And, of course, once again, thank you for joining. Now, we'll be looking for an interview with somebody from Mouse Sports in a moment. I'll see if I can grab Kuroki in just a moment. The now have unfortunately, unfortunately, DD, they had, uh, looked like they had a chance here. They had a very dangerous combination, but in the end, in the end, they really needed something to shut down Black, and they just didn't find it. They spent a lot of time suppressing pass, but in the end, it wasn't pass to crush them. It was that free farming loan drop, but there we go. Again. So anyway, guys, stay tuned. In about five minutes, should have an interview with somebody from Mouse Sports, and of course, we do have games coming up. Of course, there is one final game. Standard match coming up, which is Empire versus Dignitas, I believe, and that should be a good one. I believe that's second and first place, or currently second and first place playing off.